Hello everybody, today you're watching the Tropics Topics of October the 8th, 2018. I apologize for the lack of an update yesterday, I was a bit busy, uh, but today I'm back and we have a lot to talk about today regarding now Hurricane Michael, this was named yesterday, apparently Category 1 Hurricane, minimal at that, but this will continue to intensify, winds at 75 miles an hour, pressure 982 millibars, Leslie's still around, a moderate tropical storm, and we have two other uh, disturbances that are currently active, we'll get to those in a minute. This one not likely to develop at all. This one could have a chance but will likely be weak. Uh, here's a wide shot of the Atlantic right now. As you can see here, Michael uh, just off the coast of Cuba in the Yucatan Channel. Leslie out here in the North Atlantic. Uh, the disturbance between the Azores and Canaries out here not doing anything. And then the storm here in the MDR which could develop into a brief depression but likely won't be very strong or affect any land areas. So let's start off with the biggest task at hand here which is Hurricane Michael. This intensified very quickly yesterday. was Barely a tropical storm, even 24 hours ago, was being heavily sheared from the west and has now gotten his act together tremendously and is now currently a minimal hurricane as a cate is category one right now. As you can see here, it's coming in and out of having an eye feature visible on satellite, but even though it is not there on the satellite, it is certainly there within the core. As you can see here in this loop here from Simis, you can see that the storm uh, center of your location there, but you can see here in these last few frames an eye gets developing right there just to the south of the western tip of Cuba. So it is there right now. It still is organizing right now. It's still f dealing with a little bit of westerly shear at the minute. Not a whole lot though, and it's decreasing pretty quickly. And another thing to say about the storm is that it's very vigorous right now because all this convection here is extremely strong. If I switch over to an infrared loop here, can see that we're seeing cloud tops in minus 80 degrees Celsius, which is very cold, means that the thunderstorms are very intense. And you can see some of these thunderstorms even on the east side of Michael, coming up right here in the Isle of Youth in Cuba and into the western port of the island itself. And these thunderstorms have been exceptionally strong. Cape Valleys in here are about 20, 2,500 uh, joules per kilogram, which is just pretty high for a tropical cyclone. And that can produce some extremely intense thunderstorms that can cause very heavy rainfall, potentially even some slight severe weather within them. So this is obviously something not to take. This is something that we don't need to take uh, lightly in any regard. Uh, and Recon's currently flying through the storm right now. It's um, updating as I speak. Uh, but the last pass found a pressure of 981 millibars. This thing has kind of leveled off in intensity. It dropped 12 millibars in between two passes last night. And that was pretty incredible, meaning the storm is still intensifying and at a pretty earnest pace. If you look at the water vapor loop here, we can see that here's Michael, obviously, and we have this trough here that's been inducing some of this westerly shear over the storm that has been lifting up and is now currently out through the north Gulf Coast and will be continuing to move towards the north with this trough that's dipping in to the uh, Four Corners region. I'll talk more about synoptics in just a bit. But we can see here that Michael is not really feeling the effects of this anymore. We can see that this outflow right here is continuing to expand westward despite some of the, the face of some of this shear coming in from this direction. And as a result, the storm has been able to intensify a bit more. However, there is some shear still present at the mid-level, so this is going, so that may try and hinder how strong Michael can intensify over the next, say, 24 hours loop jumped in for a minute. It might try to hinder how much intensify over the next 24 hours, but regardless, this thing is still going to intensify rather quickly. The National Hurricane Center expects that this thing could reach Category 3 intensity, major hurricane, by the time it makes landfall, sometime during the middle of the week, Wednesday or Wednesday night, most likely. I remember saying that in one of those updates on in the, in the excuse me in the update on Saturday that I don't think Category 3 solution is likely. Unfortunately, I was wrong. And this is going to be more than likely a Category 3 hurricane at landfall, possibly even stronger. If you look here at the GFS model, uh, this is that was out to 60 hours, that was a landfall. This is now. You can see that we have this trough dipping in the Four Corners region, as we can see here. You can see this low spinning right here, just south of the, uh, just below the timestamp there. And you can see that's currently over the Rockies. And we also have this very strong ridge here over the mid-Atlantic. And both of these features are causing a general northerly flow all across the Gulf of Mexico. As we can see here, I'm going to just kind of annotate this really quick. So we have this trough here over the um, four corners, and then we have the ridge out here off the coast of the Carolinas and um, the mid-Atlantic, excuse me. And all of this is causing flow to come out of the north, including this upper low right here, 
this is weakening and moving towards the north and is going to get caught in this uh, southwesterly flow and is going to curve on out and dissipate. It's going to be pretty much over in this portion of the country by the time Michael starts to approach landfall. And this ridge is going to be also assisting in this northerly flow. So Michael down here is, has basically nowhere to go except just due north. Now, the question is, there's still some questions that would track. The storm is going to progress north. That's pretty much given. But where does it make landfall? Right now, basically anywhere along the Florida panhandle is fair game for Michael. It could still come as far west as Alabama, but that is unlikely at this point. The Florida panhandle is more than likely to receive a direct hurricane landfall from the storm. Now, where exactly is it hit? That's more. That's dependent on where exactly this trough is located and how fast Michael moves. Because we can see here in the GFS model, it makes it gives Michael a landfall by 18Z on Wednesday. That's about 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, which is dead in the afternoon on Wednesday. The European, on the other hand, this is zero Z. This is zero Z on Wednesday. This is. Uh, Wednesday, after, Wednesday evening, excuse me, and it doesn't make landfall until Wednesday night near Apalachicola, and this is because if it, the storm is delayed in its approach, say, if, okay, so say it's here by Wednesday afternoon, like the GFS is saying, then this trough is going to be lifting out into this portion of the country right here. So you're going to have flow kind of like this. So either way, it's going to kind of take an easterly bend a little bit and then eventually may move up like this in the GFS solution if the storm is in this position Wednesday afternoon. If it's in this position Wednesday afternoon, however, this position, then the trough will be a bit further east, and as a result, the flow is going to be a bit more towards the east like that. So instead, it may try and hit more towards Apalachicola, maybe through the Big Bend region, possibly near Tallahassee, and then up the Carolinas, which they where they obviously don't need any rain, like, rain right now after Florence hit, about three weeks ago. So so either way, basically anywhere from Destin to, you know, St. Mark, Cedar Key, this area, is likely to see the landfall of a major hurricane come Wednesday into Thursday from Michael down here. And again, this is still kind of uncertain at this point. If we look here at the um, model tracks, we can see that there's still a bit of a spread here, and then the official forecast is much farther east. We can see that here right now. We can see that the National Hurricane Center currently forecasting Michael to be a 120 mile an hour category three by the time it makes landfall sometime on Wednesday evening. And it's showing it making landfall pretty close to Mexico Beach, Apalachicola, basically anywhere southeast of Panama City. Uh, but if this does delay a little bit, this may even be a bit further east. If it does delay and it makes landfall in this portion right here of Florida, then this would be better news. This portion of Florida right here, this coastline, is not very well, not very highly populated at all. I mean, the last storm that came in through this region was Hermine, and that didn't cause a whole lot of damage. Uh, one, it, well, for one, it was weaker, but two, there really is, aren't a lot of settlements here. Basically, nothing between Apalachicola and Cedar Key right here, this whole portion of coastline, is pretty sparsely populated. So that is some good news, but if it is faster, then it will be moving into an area that is more densely populated in quotes, from Apalachicola to Panama City Seaside, Destin, that area, um, along the coast of Florida. So we're just going to have to wait and see on how fast Michael moves. If it Again, if it moves faster, uh, closer towards the east, or closer towards the west, excuse me, if it moves slower, closer towards the east because of that trough orientation I talked about earlier. Um, so here, yeah, this is the National Hurricane Center forecast cone. You can also see here watches and warnings in place. Uh, we have watches... Um, in place from basically tropical storm watches for the Alabama coast and from Tampa up to Cedar Key, and then hurricane watches from Pensacola to Cedar Key, essentially. And then we have warnings here uh, for the northeastern Yucatan near Cancun, which where they currently aren't seeing too many uh, inclement weather conditions. Uh, Western Cuba, on the other hand, you are, and they're likely seeing some pretty significant flooding and wind impacts, and even potentially storm surge in this portion of Cuba right now and they're currently under a hurricane warning and then the Isle of Thieves under a tropical storm warning. As you can see here, and it's not just, I mean, you can see here that this storm could be even a big storm even further inland. It's not just a coastal event. Right? Uh, tropical cyclones never are. You can see here the wind impacts are going to be coming in well, in, are going to be coming in well inland. And 
you know, you might start seeing tropical storm force winds along the coast as early as Wednesday morning, and then maybe even, even the Thursday as we get up in the Carolinas. And again, wind isn't the main threat. Rainfall and storm surge are main threats. We saw that with Florence heavily, heavily emphasized um, in September, and Michael is probably going to be no different, although Michael is probably going to be a bit more of a wind machine than Florence was, but either way, it's going to be a big water machine as well. As you can see here, rainfall totals potentially local locally as high as a foot possibly in this portion of Florida. And that's because Michael is, the fortunate thing with Michael is that it's going to be moving. We're not going to be dealing with the whole stalling motion that we dealt with with both, that we dealt with with storms like Florence or Harvey. We're not going to be seeing that with Michael. It's going to be moving in and moving out. So either way, you're still going to see a lot of rainfall regardless, but it's not going to be 36 inches like they saw up here in North Carolina from Florence. That's not to say that you can't see significant flooding, though, because you certainly could. And even and speaking of North Carolina, you could even see four or six inches of rain from Michael here. Even though you don't need it, obviously, it still could be a possibility that you do see a lot of rainfall. Uh, but again, the number one threat with hurricanes comes from storm surge. As we can see here in this graph from the National Hurricane Center, storm surge is going to be probably the worst in this portion of coastline here from Apalachicola to basically Subaki, Hamanasa Springs, that area, and potentially as high as nine feet. Now, again, this portion of coastline is not heavily populated, but still, if you are in these portions of coastline, you should be getting out pretty soon. Watches are currently in place, and they will be upgraded to warnings very soon, I can assure you that. So make sure you have your hurricane plans ready, because, again, storm surge is the number one killer in tropical cyclones, regardless of anything. And... I said this a lot during Florence, I'm going to say it a lot now, 9 out of 10 deaths occur from water in tropical cyclones. It is not the wind that people associate hurricanes with, it's the water in almost every uh, case that kills people. So please get out if you're in a storm surge prone area, please don't take this lightly. This is a serious situation, it's category 3, maybe even a category 4 hurricane moving on this portion of the coast within the next 48 to 72 hours. Please be safe, please take this seriously. Um, and please uh, heed the information of your local officials, adhere to them for the latest information regarding your specific area. They will tell you what is best for you, and they will tell you where to go and what to do just in case some circumstances go down. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly touch on the rest of the tropics here. This is Leslie here, tropical storm up in the North Atlantic, 45 knot winds, 50 miles an hour. It's a moderate tropical storm, and it's continuing to move off towards the east-southeast the GFS model here. Is showing it continuing to move in that direction, though there might be something interesting that happens within the next five days. For one, the storms like to intensify. National Hurricane Center expects it to get back to hurricane strength. But this trough here is going to be interesting. The interaction with this trough, as you can see in the model, Leslie continues to move up towards the northeast in a pretty still un unusual area, but it doesn't quite get that connection with the trough, and this ridge down here isn't strong enough to pull it down this way, like some previous model runs were suggesting. So instead, believe it or not, this just ends up making landfall in the Iberian Peninsula near the Portugal-Spain border. This is highly unusual, and I honestly have my doubts over this solution, but now that the European model is showing the exact same thing, I don't know, it's possible It's possible we could be seeing a landfall in Portugal from Leslie here. That's very rare. It's, there's only been one other recorded instance of a tropical cyclone making landfall in the Iberian Peninsula, and that was Vince in 2005, and even that was a very weak depression by the time it made landfall. Leslie might not be so weak. As we can see on the National Hurricane Center forecast, this southeast dip is continuing to be expected, and then will eventually become more easterly in nature, becoming a hurricane once more, moving between the Azores and Canary Islands, and then towards the Iberian Peninsula. It is possible that it does make landfall. However, it's still kind of early to say whether or not that will happen. We're just going to have to keep an eye on it for now. Uh, lastly here, this uh, wave in the main development region is it doesn't look too bad, but it's currently in the face of some wind shear, and it might or might not get the chance to develop. This could become a tropical depression over the next few days, but it won't be impacting any land areas, and it'll be short-lived regardless. Okay, so that's the tropics here. Obviously, the big story being Michael approaching the Gulf Coast of the United States will probably be, is going, to, is going to be a serious storm for many areas. Again, Leslie here, potentially a long-range threat to this portion of the basin, which very rarely sees storms, and then, of course, these other two. Uh, disturbances that likely won't, won't be too significant in any regard. All right, that's it for today. I'll keep updating you guys on Michael and everything regarding it over the next few days. So thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert, especially during this time.